Hey everyone, it's Rod with Pow Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ stocks, crypto assets, news and interviews. Also home to the best MJ community. Today is Saturday, April 6th. Hope you're having a great weekend. And in this video, we're going to be explaining Canopy USA and the exchangeable share vote that's coming up on April 12th. I'm getting a ton of questions about this. And as always, this isn't financial advice. I'm not a financial expert. You should never buy or sell anything based on anything that I say. And I'm definitely not an expert when it comes to exchangeable shares, but I did look into this and you know it's kind of a complex structure it's a novel structure as well with regards to Canadian LPs starting to create US holding companies to circumvent some of these issues with the Nasdaq and uh, you know the SEC the Securities and Exchange Commission so I want to simply explain this in layman's terms explain it to you as if you were five right and uh explain it to me like i'm five so you know again it's very complicated but at the end of the day it's basically just a parent company a subsidiary there are two separate entities the u.s assets will be held by canopy usa under that holdings company an llc and it helps basically mitigate risk and also circumvent some of these issues with the nasdaq and the sec but also allow people and retail investors to have access to the US market through this holdings company. But again, we'll break it down into more detail here in just a moment. But before we do, make sure to smash like, it helps support me in the channel. If you're new, you can subscribe, tick the bell, all the good stuff, and to be notified on any future videos or when I go live. Also, you can follow us over on X, formerly Twitter. The handle for that is at GroupPow. Going to be using that as my platform of choice going forward. And also, if you scroll down on the community tab here on YouTube on the channel, I'm giving away an annual membership valued at $150 to the Pow Group private community, and all the details are there, so you can just scroll down and check that out. But Independent Proxy Advisor Institutional Shareholders Services, ISS, recommends Canopy Growth shareholders vote for the creation of exchangeable shares to further advance Canopy USA, and also Constellation Brands is going to be voting in favor of and said it would initiate that share exchange. So we're going to go through the details here, but essentially the vote is going to be on Friday, April 12th at 1 p.m. Eastern time, and they recommend voting in favor of, and it's going to create and authorize the issuance of a number of new class and non-voting and non-participating exchangeable shares in the capital of Canopy Growth, restate the rights of the common shares in the capital of Canopy Growth, and provide a conversion whereby each common share may at any time at the option of the holder be converted into one exchangeable share. So the background is they're trying to accelerate their entry into the U.S., right, as the U.S. drags their feet. Could be multiple years before we see federal legalization, right? So this is a novel structure where they're trying to create a, a holdings company in the U.S., right? And then you can change your shares, exchange your shares for, you know, from a common share to an exchangeable share. And it essentially will give you exposure to that, but you don't have any voting rights. And the companies that Canopy USA will hold will be Acres Holdings, uh, the Mountain High Products, Wana Wellness, SEMA Group, and then Jetty. So upon Canopy's US, USA acquisition of these US businesses, Canopy Growth is expected to deconsolidate the financial results of Canopy USA and have a non-controlling interest in Canopy USA, which will be accounted for as an equity method investment, right? So it'll just be on their equity in their, their reporting, but it doesn't go directly on Canopy's main financials, right? So it'll go through Canopy USA. Those finance, like the companies and the financial results will be segregated, right? So they'll be separate. And again, if you decide to convert it into an exchangeable share, uh, you just don't have any basic voting rights and things like that, which something similar uh, is coming down the pipe here with uh, Constellation Brands. So we'll take a look at that in just a moment and it should make things a little bit more clear. And I have a video I wanna to share too from David Klein in a moment. But an exchangeable security, what it is, how it works, and an example. So an exchangeable security, an investment instrument that can be swapped at any future date for shares in another company or its cash equivalent. So I encourage you to check out that uh, in th that article in Investopedia if you want to learn more about it. But I posted a video saying that, you know, LPs will become MSOs and vice versa. So essentially U.S. operators will become Canadian operators and then Canadian will become U.S. operators. And then we'll see big, you know, the blue chip phase where we see big mega mega mergers right and then shortly after i posted this video uh actually boris jordan came out and said that uh well the company announced that they were going to be acquiring northern green canada a canadian operator so basically it happened not to the mega merger blue chip phase degree right but uh, it's still happening nonetheless so now we'll dive into the exchangeable shares and really drive this point home i think this is really going to help everybody ex understand a lot better and I had to kind of pause the video, start the video. My daughter wasn't doing too well, so I went and got her and out of the crib. She didn't want to be by herself, so I'm holding her right now while I make this video. 
Uh, she's super sweet, and uh, she seems pretty content now in Daddy's arms. So we'll go through here. Upon various approvals, Canopy would possess non-voting exchangeable shares in Canopy USA, the new holdings company, which would eventually be converted into common shares. Canopy said it will have no economic or voting interest in Canopy USA, which will operate independently from the Canadian business. Canopy USA would be run by a board of managers consisting of Canopy Gross CEO David Klein, at least one more unidentified Canopy appointee, an unidentified third-party investor in Canopy USA, and WANA CEO and founder Nancy Whiteman. And then if we go down to the exchangeable shares section here, the plan is to consolidate all of Canopy's American MJ assets into a single entity, Canopy USA, requires the creation of a new class of non-voting exchangeable shares in the capital of Camp Canopy and the company's executives explained in the conference call. The exchangeable share structure will enable Canopy US to trigger full ownership of Acreage, Jetty, and WANA. Canopy USA, not Canopy Growth, will own these three assets, right? So that, in layman's terms, is essentially the most basic ex explanation, right, of what it is, trying to segregate those two things. So under the plan, Canopy Growth would hold non-voting exchangeable shares in Canopy USA, creating a ringed fence structure between it and Canopy USA, the company said. And a ring, a ring fence structure definition in finance and accounting and legality. So what does ringed fence mean? It refers to the creation of a virtual barrier that segregates a company's, like a portion of a company's financial assets from the rest, right? So key takeaways, it's a protective move in finance that segregates some of the company's assets from others. Offshore banking is sometimes referred to as ring fencing assets and ring fencing can protect a portion of assets from risk, uh, uh, risk as well. And then the creation of these exchangeable shares will allow shareholders to self-assess their level of comfort with Canopy's exposure to the U.S. market, right? So you can hold your regular ones or you can do the exchangeable ones at your own discretion and have exposure to the U.S., right? And take on that extra risk is basically what they're saying. And then alcoholic beverage giant Constellation Brands, the maker of, um, of uh, Corona and multi other multitude of other beverages, but that's the big one which is Canopy's largest shareholder has already and you know invested billions of dollars has already signaled its intention to change its common shares for exchangeable ones. So, if you're wondering if you should do it or not, obviously not financial advice, I can't tell you what to do, but I will be doing it and, you know, if Constellation Brands is going to be doing it, that's pretty much all we need to know right there. <laughs> Constellation Brands also intends to transition existing common shares ownership and interest in Canopy Growth into new exchangeable shares protecting Constellation shareholder value while retaining an interest in Canopy Growth through non-voting and non-participating shares, Constellation said in a news release. Canopy said that the structure would ensure Constellation, a maker of the, a maker and marketer of beer, wine, and spirits, remains the largest shareholder over the long term. So they're not giving up, right? They're very confident in the long term. Canopy has said that if Constellation elects to convert its Canopy shares into exchangeable shares, and Canopy's exchangeable shares plan is approved by shareholders in January, January 12th. Then, Constellation will surrender for Constellation's 139,745,453 warrants to purchase Canopy Common shares for no consideration. And Constellation will no longer have the right to nominate board members of Canopy, right? Will no longer have any approval rights or certain, over certain transactions proposed by the undertaking of the company. Restrictive covenants previously agreed between the two parties will terminate. And all Constellation nominees that are currently serving on the board are expected to resign. And new directors will be appointed to fill the vacancies caused by the resignations, right? So Bloomberg reported this, that Constellation might convert its exchangeable shares in Canopy back to common stock at any time as well, right? So that really does a great job explaining what that means, and that is in the basic, most basic terms. And then if you go to canopygrowth.com slash investors slash Canopy USA, introducing Canopy USA, Gridge Jetty, WANA, and then there's a video here with David Klein, but they go through some strategic highlights. We'll go through the video here in just a second. I just want to bring up the last couple of pieces and we'll finish off with the with the video. And there's a lot here. Like I said, this will fast track their entry into the U.S. And uh, yeah, we'll go through the video first, actually, and then we'll look at the uh, the slide there that they have to go with it. So we'll play this video here real quick. Canopy's goal is to become the leading premium branded cannabis company in North America. The key to achieving this goal is winning in the largest and fastest growing cannabis market in the world, the United States. We recognize that state by state legalization continues at a fever pace 
and existing state-level markets in the U.S. are growing rapidly, building to what experts say will be an over $50 billion industry in 2026. Over the past few years, we've laid the groundwork to win in the U.S. through arrangements with Acreage, Jetty, and WANA, along with our investments in Terrasend. Our vision was that these businesses would someday operate as one company. To achieve this, we've created a U.S. holding company, Canopy USA, that will bring the power of Acreage, Jetty, and WANA together under one umbrella, creating a strong North American cannabis company with a collection of powerful brands that have established traction across key U.S. markets. Going forward, Canopy USA will look for opportunities to leverage best-in-class capabilities across each of these businesses to unlock value for our consumers, create profitable growth, and drive value for our shareholders. Canopy USA will also look for ways to collaborate with existing single-state and multi-state operators to build a stable and sustainable cannabis market across the U.S. In the next few months, Canopy shareholders will have an opportunity to vote on a proposal to create a new class of exchangeable shares, which would allow all shareholders the opportunity to self-assess their level of comfort with Canopy's exposure to the U.S. cannabis market. We've also worked with Constellation Brands to enter an agreement whereby Constellation has indicated its support for the creation of Canopy USA and an intent to convert its ownership of Canopy into exchangeable shares, facilitating a clear path for Canopy to more immediately capture the U.S. growth opportunity. Importantly, upon completion of these transactions, we intend to consolidate Canopy USA's financial results into Canopy's financial statements, enabling us to better highlight the value of these U.S. assets for our investors. Over time, we expect Canopy USA to become a core pillar of Canopy's value proposition, making up a significant share of the consolidated company's revenue mix and enhancing our growth potential. Once we close all of the announced transactions, and as we continue to improve focus in our Canadian cannabis business, we expect Canopy's global cannabis business to be profitable on a consolidated, adjusted EBITDA basis. This is an exciting next step for Canopy as we look to realize our vision to unleash the power of cannabis to improve lives. So with that, stay tuned for more exciting news. We're just getting started. So that was a fantastic video and absolutely just getting started. Like I said, I've said this many times, it's just the first inning here. And like David said at the beginning, the goal is to have everything operate under you know, one entity, right, eventually, but with all the restrictions in the U.S., could be multiple years before we see full-blown federal legalization, likely through descheduling, right, removal of of MJ from the narcotics list, similar to what Germany and Canada did. But as of right now, this is essentially a stopgap to accelerate entry and, and to accelerate entry into the U.S. market through this novel structure, right? So it's complicated for sure. It doesn't need to be that complicated. Essentially, it's just a parent company, a subsidiary, a holdings company in the U.S. All the U.S. assets are owned by the U.S. entity. And if you do the exchangeable shares and self-assess and get access to the U.S. market, you don't have that voting rights. And then same thing with Constellation Brand. They have to rejig everything with the, the board members and they don't have like those special rights, right? So that's basically, in layman's terms, the most simplest way that I can explain it. And then there's a, a full slide deck here, an investor deck as well uh, on their investor section. So you go through this. I highly encourage you to check it out. And then they go through a very big deep dive details on, you know, the market and all of their uh, subsidiaries. So Jetty Acreage, Wana, and this would effectively make Canopy a multi-state operator, right? So again, what I've been saying is you're going to see LPs become MSOs and vice versa. And then if we go down here to the exchangeable share section, Canopy to hold a shareholder vote on April 12th, as I mentioned, to create a new class of exchangeable shares in Canopy. Exchangeable shares are not entitled to any voting rights, dividends, or other rights associated with common share ownership. So uh, again, it is it is a complicated structure. It sounds complicated. It's just most people, myself included, you know, we're not super used to seeing this type of thing. And again, it's a novel structure in, in MJ, so we haven't really seen this thing before. But it's okay, sweetheart. <laughs> She's getting pretty uh, pretty restless, so I think she's getting hungry. So I'm going to wrap this video up. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, smash the like, share it with anybody that might find value, and let me know in the comments section below if this made sense or if you'd like to see more information on this topic in the future. But have the rest, great rest of your weekend. It's Rod with Pow Group. Thanks again for joining us on The Pursuit of Wealth, and we'll see you on the next video.